and welcome back to King's Crimson Ant World. Um, first off, I want to give a big shout out to Daniel Keeping Fish. Um, he actually sparked the idea for this video. So go check him out. Great guy. Great channel. Um, so today, we're, this video is going to be an experiment. Uh, KP in aquariums. Um, we've got five jars. A, B, C, D, and D, um, and we're going to fill them and be filled with 360 ml of water. We're using the water out of our Malawi cichlid tank. That's a high pH of eight, um, and we're going to see if the P, the cocoa P, is effective at lowering pH, which I've read it is. So we'll we'll be testing that, and um, what it's like tannin wise. Um, because whether there's a high concentration of tannins with this or not, because it, it comes from obviously coconuts, um, so it's more of a botanical than a soil. So, so if you wanted to use it as a substrate, just something to be aware of, it probably will end up breaking down like your almond leaves would, and um, like your banana leaves, and your, you know everything like that. So that's just something to think about um, before you try it. Um, also, we're going to see whether it sinks. If if this experiment's going to go on over five days, and each day I'll test the pH and see how that's going and everything. So um, we'll see if it sinks to the bottom or not, because obviously your almond leaves, your banana leaves, and everything like that, your older cones, they take a while to sink. So my first thought is this is probably going to float for a while and then sink to the bottom. So we'll just have to wait and see how that goes. And um, if by the end of the five days it's not sunk, then I'll end up leaving it another five days and seeing if um, it's still floating or if it's sunk by then as well. Um, but jar A, we're going to put in one scoop, one 30 mil scoop of cocoa peat in. Jar B will have two scoops. Jar C will have three scoops. And then jar D, we're going to put in um enough so that it creates like a substrate layer and top it with gravel and see whether that affects how the cocoa peat works in there or not and e is just going to be our control one we're not going to put anything in there just so we can test it and everything just as a control so here we have the cocoa peat it's just dry compressed um cocoa peat this one that i've got has been washed three times and sterilized before it's been packaged um and it is it. so we need it's dry and everything so this is where the magic happens with the cocoa peat we're going to wet it first and it will just expand as it soaks up all the water and just see it growing and it's just, it's just really cool to watch um, so we're just going to get this all nice and damp and down and expanded before we actually start putting it in our jars. And you can just see just how much there is actually in it now. It didn't look like there was much, but it, it definitely expands out nicely. And then it's just all breaks up and is reminiscent of a soil. So we're now going to start putting that into the jars as we need to. Just putting in jar A's paint there. We'll be doing jar B. Just getting it in the little tub. Doing this all one handed, so just bear with me a little. Um, it's two scoops. We'll do jar C. One 
landscape. Two scoops and three scoops, and then get it all in. So I'll add the water in a minute, but it looks like I'm going to need a little bit more peat for the last one, so I'll just get that sorted. Right, so we're all ready with the jars, with all the peat they need, or don't need. Um, so I'm now going to just fill these all up, and uh, I'll be back for you in a minute. So I've filled it all up, each jar, and, well, from the top it looks like I'm brewing a rather bad tea. Um, it's all floated, as I thought it would. The top, some bits look like are at the bottom, but a lot of it is also at the top floating um so i was expecting it to float um hopefully that will sink we'll find out um this one has topped nicely with the gravel um it's not all floated up through the gravel or anything so it would probably be held down quite well with gra nice heavy sort of gravel or a nice layer of sand or something like that and then we've got our control here which is just clear nothing in it um so we'll put the lids on and we'll come back tomorrow and see whether there's been much of a dye going on in any of the um, jars, any tannins, and um, see what like the pH is doing as well, whether that's gone down or not. And um, we'll see you then. Hi guys, so it's day two of this experiment and first things first, I'm going to test the pH of all the waters in the jars and we'll go from there. To test these waters, I'm going to be using my API Freshwater Master Test Kit. So here we've got our um, high range pH I used first and um, our control jar, jar E which has nothing in it, it's just the water, the original water, um, had a pH of 8, which is quite difficult. It looks like it says 8.2, but that's just because of the lighting when I took the picture. It wasn't the same as the lighting when I obviously um, held it up and everything. Um, and then and jars A, B, C and D all came back as a 7.4 pH. So um, I'm then I then decided to try and do the low range pH tests which come in the kit too. So on the low range pH tests um, that come with the API kit I got jar A which has one scoop of um, cocoa peat in it, one 30ml scoop. That had, came back with a pH of 6.6. .6. Jar B had two scoops so that came back at 6.2 and jar C had three 30ml scoops of cocoa peat in it and that came back as a pH of 6, so drastic change in all the pH there. I really wasn't expecting it. Jar D, which is the cocoa peat layer topped with gravel, seems to be um, changing the pH a lot slower, and a nice slower rate, and that came back as a pH of 7.2. So, um, all varying degrees, obviously the more you add, the more the pH lowers, but it lowers very quickly. So, you know, one of the jar, jar C has gone down um, from 8 to 6 in 24 hours. Um, so if you were using it in an aquarium, you'd probably want to do, I think a little would go a long way. Um, so I didn't do low range pH on jar E, the control one, because that's already got a pH of 8. So there's no point doing that one, that won't work. Um, but now we'll have a look at the jars and see what's going on tannin wise. So jar E, um, obviously that's our control, there's no cocoa peat in there so that is still as crystal clear as you would expect a jar of plain water to be. So that's all good. I've then looked at jar D 
the layer of cocoa peat with the gravel substrate on top um still no floating and um so the gravel was weighing it down really well and still pretty clear water there's a slight change but you can't really notice it um compared to the control so we're now looking at jar a which had one scoop of cocoa peat in it um there's a slight discoloration if you look at it quite closely um not really noticeable most of the peat has sunk to the bottom now there's still some floating um jar b a lot of it has sunk still some floating you can just see some gradually floating down in there um a lot more of a tint in this one as well uh, a lot more noticeable um so they're releasing some some nice tannins and then jar c um, three scoops of peat um a lot more noticeable discoloration of the water too um so i think this is one that will color your water quite well um we'll have a look tomorrow and see if there's a stronger discoloration going on and see how the tests work out then then so i've lost the um footage and stuff that i got for the last few days i'm not sure what's happened but i can't find them to put in the video so we're jumping to day five i will tell you the results from obviously the other days as well um so we'll get to it so the ph for a b and c has stayed the same for day three four and five a being 6.6 .6, B being 6.2 and C being 6. Um, so it seems like once the P lowers your pH, it then keeps it stable. Um, it doesn't just keep lowering down. It just stays at the level that it's gone to. And that's with the jars that are, um, they have free floating cocoa pea in. Jar D, which is a layer of the pea covered in gravel, or topped with gravel, had gone to seven on day three was also seven on day four and then day five has got a reading of 6.8 so it is still gradually lowering down the ph just at a much slower rate um which must be due to the fact that it's obviously topped with the gravel um so that's interesting anyway and then our control one has um remained a steady eight as well the one which we have just left playing with no peat in just as our control so another look at our control jar still as crystal clear and nice as you would expect jar d um with the gravel layer um you can see that it, it looks like there's a slight tinting to the water but it's not major um jar a one scoop of 30 mil of cocoa peat in there and again there's not really I wouldn't say there's been loads of tannin release in there. Um, and then we're going to look at jar B, two scoops, and you can see more of a tint in this jar as well, um, which is very interesting. And then jar B, jar C, and you can see there is a good, nice tinting in there from the peat also, um, which you'd expect that's got three scoops in. So that's 90 mil of cocoa peat also. And we thought it'd be interesting to see how cocoa peat also affects inside an aquarium being placed within the filter. So our 260, we normally like to keep that at a pH of about 6.5. Um, but recently it's been stuck at around 7.5 and we've not been able to lower, lower it down at all. So three days ago, we put in 75 mils of cocoa peat roughly the same amount of weird use we normally get some super super peat um which we put in to lower the ph but that hasn't been lowering it down as much this time so we've tried this and it's in a mesh bag inside the filter and the ph has gone down to seven so far um so it's going down nice and gradually so it's not going to stress the fish out um, and it'll be interesting to see how much it goes down again within the next week, if it does, or whether we've not put enough in yet. Um, so we'll be seeing how that goes. But it does seem that, obviously, if it's loose in the aquarium or in water, it lowers the pH a lot more faster um, than if it's, say, as a layer of substrate with gravel on top um, or in a filter. Um, but it 
it, we know it's good also at growing terrestrial plants um so we don't know if it is as good at growing aquatic plants although if you would like to see a video of us attempting to grow some aquatic plants in cocoa peat substrate then just tell us in the comments below and we'll see what we can do um but obviously this is just a video of our experience of trying cocoa peat in the experiment we're not saying you should use it if you decide to use it you do you know it'll be at your own discretion you'll have to play around with the amount that you put into your tank to see how much you need um because it's obviously different different it works for, what works for some people may not work for another person so you know be be aware you might try it and you might find it doesn't work for you or it, you don't get on with it you may not like it as much so it's it's just all these little factors to put in um but overall we're happy with it and how it's all going at the moment um so it seems to be good for us anyway um if you'd like us to do any more experiments on other botanicals like how we've done this video with like old cones or almond leaves or banana leaves then again just tell us in down in the comments um and uh, we'll see what we can do there as well um i know that a lot of people do find these sort of videos quite interesting so just just let us know and we'll we'll try and see what we can do um but we hope that you guys have all found this video nice and informative you've enjoyed it um let us know what your experiences are if you do try it um but anyway thank you very much for watching please like comment share and subscribe and um we'll see you in the next video bye